afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Foreign Correspondents Club of Japan. Thank you for coming today despite the typhoon, although there's nothing serious outside this building. It's very nice weather. And I would like also to thank those who are watching us on live streaming uh, all over the world. Thank you for watching. Uh, today, it's uh, my pleasure to welcome a veteran watcher of Japanese politics over the last few years and uh, a returnee to our press club, especially in the first day after the elections when we need most somebody to tell us what's in the horizon in this uh, political situation and arena here, especially after the elections yesterday seems to have no surprise and the status quo is continuing as usual. Our guest speaker, uh, Professor Emirates Gerald Curtis, is a uh, Professor Emirates of Political Science at Columbia University of the United States of America. And he is also uh, residing in Japan. He comes here sometimes. And we are so lucky to have him today. Uh, he will speak today for about uh, 20 minutes. And that will be followed by questions and answers. And we all hope that we get more information than what we already gained last night, over the night, about the elections. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome our guest speaker, Professor Emirates Gerard Hartis. Thank you. Thank you. I think I'll, I'll sit down and uh, we, can, we can proceed. So it's, uh, it's a pleasure to be, to be back here at the FCCJ. Every time there's an election, I seem to find my way to the F to Japan, for one thing, and to the FCC, FCCJ. Uh, <clears throat> Before I came in, the routine here is to sign this uh, book of speakers. So I figured I had to figure out what to, what to write. It'll tell you what I, <laughs> some of what I think. I wrote another election, another LDP victory. It's like waiting for Godot in slow motion. <laughs> uh, so what I'd like to uh, take a few minutes to discuss with you is one, why did the LDP enjoy a landslide when, it's pro when the prime minister is so unpopular? Why did a party that um, looked like it might, if not unseat the LDP, at least unseat the prime minister, that is the Skibonoto, uh, the uh, the party of no, no more hope. Um, <laughs> uh, why did it sort of self self destruct? And why did a party called the Constitutional Democratic Party um, uh, come out of nowhere to now be the largest opposition party in Japan? And what does any of what does all of this mean for politics and for policy? going forward. So it's a lot to talk about. Uh, as far as the election results themselves, you're all familiar with, you all know what happened. So I won't, go to, I won't spend a lot of time on it. But the LDP won 283 seats. Um, it had 290 going into the election. The Diet has 10 fewer members than it did before. Percentage is the same. It's almost exactly the same. And with the Komeito, um, the combination is more than two-thirds. I'll come back to this point in a few minutes, but uh, that makes it possible for constitutional revision. And my strong belief is there will be no, no revision of the Constitution while I'll be as Prime Minister. And I'll come back and explain why I believe that is, uh, uh, that is the case. So why did the LDP win so big? Not that hard to understand. Um, one, the most, probably the most important reason is that the opposition was, was divided. In 78% of the single member districts, there were two or more opposition party candidates uh, running against the, 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 LDP, uh, the LDP candidate. And um, the, um, um, the, how should I put it? Um, the ability of Governor Koike to destroy the enthusiasm that 
had existed for her and for her party when it was first formed was quite a feat. Uh, and we'll come back to that again, again in a minute. So, you know, the divided opposition, the unpopularity of Koike, um, the fact that this Constitutional Democratic Party had only, it was just formed and couldn't, couldn't get enough candidates to, to run to make more of a, uh, to do better than it did. It went from 15 sort of incumbent Democratic Party guys who joined that party uh, to, uh, what, 54? Uh, 57, uh, no, 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 uh, 54 seats. It won 54 seats this time. That was a, you know, a tremendous um, uh, jump, but it couldn't, do, it couldn't get more, more than that. <clears throat> so the LDP is the big winner. Just a word on the Cometo, uh, so I think that some of the reporting is not, is not very, very accurate. The, so the Cometo lost five seats, went from 34 to, to 29. It doesn't mean anything really in terms of going forward because the Cometo will, the Cometo will stay linked to the LDP. Uh, it lost only, it lost one seat in the single member districts in Kanagawa, where, they, where they, it was just a, a, a Constitutional Democratic Party candidate, Komito candidate, and someone from Yishin. The LDP didn't run because it was supporting the Komito candidate. But clearly, independents and a lot of LDP voters, they were just, you know, they were gonna vote against the LDP, not vote for the LDP, they went to the CDP. So I don't make much of it. Uh, and the others they lost in the, the four they lost in the PR is simply, again, because the, this Constitutional Democratic Party uh, turned out to be uh, to be um, uh, to be so uh, so so popular. <coughs> the Kibo no to it requires a f just a few minutes. Um, it was the big. This story is as much a story about the the uh, whole party being the big loser as uh, in a way as it is of the LDP being the big winner. I am convinced that if they if the opposition had hung together. Uh, they had a chance, if not to get a majority, and that would have been hard to pull off, but there was a chance they could have cost the LDP 40, 50, 60 seats, in which case Mr. Abi would have had to resign. Uh, and they blew it, uh, they, and, and she blew it, and she, uh, that is uh, Governor Koike. Um, the f first was saying that she was going to exclude people that didn't kind of sign a loyalty oath to her ideological position. In Japanese, haijo suru is more the sense of to purge. She was gonna purge the political system of these liberals. Somehow liberal became, has become identified by the Sankei Shinbun and by, by conservatives as being the same as Sayoku. But it's not. There's some Sayoku in the, in the, in the, in the, con, in the constitutional, you know, leftists in the constitutional Democratic, but not very many, they're not. It, but so, so anyway. Uh, excluding the, the 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 liberals from from the Democratic Party from running on the on the on the Hope line, basically was cutting off one of her limbs, uh, the limb of the of the Kiboto. You cannot win a majority in a single member constituency system if you're not a catch-all party that extends your reach. Uh, you know, across a good part of the political spectrum. So the opportunity to have kind of a center to left party to compete with the center right of the LDP, that's what Japan needs if you're gonna keep this election system and that's what Koike, uh, Governor Koike foolishly uh, uh, walked, away, walked, walked, uh, walked away from. Uh, so, it, you know, this exclusion, and it created this sense of this very arrogant person who was deciding by herself who, who was in and who, and who was out, and it undermined the criticism of Abe as being arrogant. She was out arrogating, whatever that right word might be. Uh, don't quote me with that word, please. Uh, Abe, Abe, him, Abe himself. And on policy, Kibo really didn't have much in the way of policy. And the one issue, I mean, their, their nuclear energy policy, aiming toward zero by 230, uh, 2030, uh, uh, not that they, but with no, no roadmap 
to get there, no overarching uh, energy, energy policy. And then the consumption tax, freezing the consumption tax. This actually played very much into the LDP a hand because she was basically, you know, Abe, had, first Abe had said this time we'll raise the consumption tax or we're going to spend most of it on, on populist benefits, on free education from nursery school, at least through, through high school, uh, social, social benefits rather than on reducing the government, the government debt. Uh, but Koike said they would do the same thing, except she couldn't figure a way. She had no proposal for, revenue, for how, where the revenue would come from. So if you freeze the consumption tax, but spend the same money that the LDP was saying they would spend, that wasn't an appealing, an appealing thing. So, you know, you, we could go on, there's no, but there's, there's, there's no point. She did very bad, they did very badly. She blew an opportunity, as I said, uh, to, cr to have a real, make a real race, a real race uh, out of this. And the party that benefited was the, this Constitutional Democratic Party, Mr. Edano. Um, and I guess that just is a story of how People frustrated with politics as usual, with inside the beltway, or what in Japanese is the Nagata Cho Seiji, uh, was looking, were looking for a way to express that dissatisfaction. And Koike thought, we thought that Kibo might be that, that outlet, but it wasn't. And so um, the, uh, the CDP rose to the occasion. I think the big, one of the, one of the reasons that party is, two reasons that party is popular, um, is that unlike Abe and Koike, who seem to be mostly, the election was mostly about themselves, uh, the Edano, I think, played well the idea that they were talking about, about constitutional democracy, about grassroots, um, and in any case, uh, they, they did well. What happens next, I'll come back to in a minute, but it, does, it is not a very encouraging, in, in, encouraging uh, picture. Um, uh, so I'll come back to the LDP and what, and the sort of the policy implications uh, again in, in, just, in just a minute, but just to finish up on the, on the opposition. Uh, Mr. Mayahara, who got all this started by deciding to dissolve his own party, he was head of it for about a month when he called meeting of both of the members of both houses of the diet of the party and said we'll now be sort of be absorbed into the into the whole party but it and and everybody in the end supported it but to do that without getting any commitment from Koike about running the candidates who wanted to run on, on the Kibo ticket, but having this exclusion, not getting a commitment for herself to run for, for the diet, that sent a very clear message to the public. The message was, there's no way that her party is gonna win a majority. Because it, it is absolutely clear that if she thought the, the, that hope, there was any hope for hope, she would have run. All of this was about becoming prime minister. Uh, and so, um, uh, so Mayahara not getting those commitments, his future is over as far as being head of the party. And he said as much, I think, last night or this morning, that he'll resign as soon as they can f figure out, as soon as the upper house members and the independents and, uh, well, particularly the upper house members and local members sort of find a way to, 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 to do that. It won't, it won't be very long. Uh, I think that um, uh, Koike is, will also probably either resign as head of the Hope Party or they'll put someone in as a co-leader who's in the diet and she will kind of fade into the background. <coughs> I think this has cost her a lot, um, not only in terms of her, her future in national politics now having been passed, I see no way for her to re recover, but her position as governor of Tokyo has been, been really weakened by what happened. You know, her party won only one seat in the single member districts in, in Tokyo. They were, wiped, they were wiped out, and the, the Komito is mad at her, 
people in her own party, a couple have already defected. It's going to be very difficult for her, um, for her going, uh, go, going forward. So now what happens in the opposition, I don't think anybody knows, including the people in, in, that are in the, you know, they're running the opposition parties. Uh, I think the key group to, to watch are those people who were elected as independents, Mushozoku, uh, from the Democratic Party, the party veterans, Prime Minister Noda, Foreign Minister uh, Okada, uh, Finance Minister Azumi, uh, Foreign Minister Gemba, the whole, almost all of them won, the guys who, who ran as independents. Uh, there will be, have to be some reorganization on the left. The big issue, I think the big problem for the, for the Constitutional Democratic Party to become the, the core of a new party is national security. On this issue, Edano, uh, in particular, and other key leaders are to the left. They, if they were to come to power, there would be a crisis in Japan's relations with the United States because they reject the national security legislation and, and the, uh, the, the, the interpretation of the Constitution to permit, to permit collective defense. So they reject the guidelines that were signed between the U.S. and Japan. Uh, there needs to be a way for the opposition to find a way to finesse that position so that this limited collective defense position can be embraced and opposition to doing more, something like that. But as long as the uh, CDP stays committed to undoing the national security legislation that was passed and to rejecting uh, collective, collective defense, I don't see how it can become the core of a large party. It can be the core of a small party, uh, but not, not of a party that can compete with the, with the LDP. So the LDP is kind of home free for the next four years. But what, is in, what I think is important to understand, what is important to, 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 to note, is that among LDP members themselves, well, you saw Abe last night on TV. He doesn't look particularly happy. Uh, and the reason is they know Japanese voting behavior has become very volatile. The old political machine doesn't deliver the vote like it used to. They were very lucky this time. This was an opportunity for a big swing. And this is the problem of single member district system in Japan, that <clears throat> it's conducive to one party dominance, except when there's a huge swing for, for because the mood has, has, sudden, has, sudden, has, suddenly, has suddenly changed. Um, so I think what you're gonna see now is Abe gets a third term. I don't think there's any question but that he will be re-elected re as president of the LDP um, uh, in September of, of, of next year. And you will have then a lame duck government in which LDP members will be start pretty early on jockeying for the succession uh, to Prime Minister, um, uh, uh, Prime Minister, um, uh, Prime Minister Abe. Um, My, I, I think that in spite of this big victory, you're not going to see anything really very new in the way of bold initiatives, whether it be on economic policy uh, or on just about any uh, issue of, 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 of great importance. <coughs> Abe wants to see constitutional revision. But, I, but we know he's ideologically on the right, and he's very pragmatic at the same time. And I think the pragmatism will force him to back off from pushing that issue too hard. And if I'm wrong, and he pushes the constitutional revision issue, it will so tie up the diet in this emotional debate that very little will get done in the way of, other, uh, of, way of, of, of legislation. So as I said at the outset, there, there is agreement among more than two-thirds of the members of the Diet to, that the Constitution could, should 
why not revise it, I guess is the best way to put it. But there is no consensus on what to revise. And the issue that everyone is most interested in, which is Article 9, is the least likely uh, clause in the, in, the, in the Constitution to be revised anytime soon. There is no agreement. Koike's party opposes his proposal for adding a clause uh, recognizing the legitimacy of the self def of the self defense forces the cgp is opposed that is the constitutional democrats are, are, are opposed to that and to uh, anything else about about article 9 so he may push it but i'd be very surprised if this gets legs uh, in the next uh, in the next year or two and as you know abe himself has backed away from his what we thought was a commitment to try to get the Article 9 revised and adopted and implemented by 2020. Now he said that was a way to stimulate, saying that was a way to stimulate debate, but it's not a timetable. So he's backed off it himself, you know, in 2000, what the year after 2020 is 2021 when he leaves office. So uh, I don't see constitutional revision in the cards. Um, what we do see, I think, is that with the consumption tax increase going mainly to spending more money uh, and probably a large budget, a deficit finance budget, the fiscal situation in Japan will continue to grow worse, but, not, but still survive, on his watch at least, and push this, and kick this, this can further down, down the road. So, you know, none, none, of the, none of the parties in this election uh, raise the issue of, of, uh, of trying to control, uh, to control spending. It was all about spending more. Um, uh, nuclear energy, I've already mentioned. Well, uh, uh, you know, Abe's position on restarting nuclear energy plants, there'll be a couple more, maybe. There's five now, maybe a few more, but not very much. So uh, they won't even get to 10%. And it, you know, dependence on, on nuclear by 2030, uh, much less anything close to what it was um, before uh, uh, Fukushima. Um, and on structural reform and Abenomics more generally, he talks about accelerating, but he's not putting any gas in the tank, as far as I can see, uh, to stimulate to do more in the way of, new, of bold initiatives on Abenomics. So what we've seen, I think we will continue to see, incremental, slow uh, uh, you know, improvements, uh, changes in deregulation and so on, but nothing very, very major. In short, if Abe was not able to accomplish over the past five years with a two-thirds majority things that he said he was going to do, why would you think he's going to be able to accomplish them over the next four. There is no reason to believe so, uh, in, 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 in my view. And finally, on North Korea, this, I think, helped the LDP. Um, I don't know how much, but I'm sure it helped, it, it helped the LDP because people are scared about um, the, 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 the danger posed by North Korea's nuclear weapons program. And why would you um, uh, turn the power of the government over to others uh, to deal with this very complicated, uh, dangerous issue rather than Abe? So I guess where I'm, uh, where I'm going here uh, is just to, to conclude. There is, it is quite impressive how much dissatisfaction and unhappiness there is with Abe. You hear it from businessmen, you hear it from general public. But the only thing worse would be having the opposition come to power. I think that is the, 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 the attitude that's so widespread uh, in this country. But I think we'll see the LDP behaving very cautiously because they do have to worry about what happens next. Um, and finally, let me conclude with kind of a somewhat academic or political science-y kind of point, which is, but also I think it's something that Japanese media 
that politicians should be talking about more. This single member district, predominantly single member district electoral system, is an awful system for Japan. <clears throat> it's bad for Japan. It's been in effect now for more than 20 years. It was supposed to create a two-party system. You had eight parties. 20 years later, there are eight parties running. People are talking about now the three poles in Japanese party politics, LDP, Constitutional Democrats, Kibo. You cannot have three poles in a single member district system last for very long. The pressures are either to become a two-party system or to become what Japan has become a one-party dominant system in which the party is much more dominant now than it ever was under the 55 system. Under the so-called 55 system, it was one-party dominance in a competitive system, and both internally, habatsu, you know, frat factions, but also with, a, with, a powerful, with an opposition that really knew what it stood for and opposed the LDP with only a third of the seats. The socialists could stop a lot from happening. Now, you don't have the factions. The opposition doesn't know what it, what it stands for, or who it wants to be, it wants, it wants to become. This system doesn't work in a, in, in a country that lacks the kind of deep social cleavages that underwrite two-party systems, whether in Britain or the US uh, or elsewhere. Um, but they're stuck with it, Japan is stuck with it. And um, as long as it is, the only way to have com competition is to, create, is to have two catch-all parties. Very tough to pull off. So I guess my, I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna stop with this. Don't, I say don't have high expectations for what this election means for the LDP getting things done that it hasn't gotten done over the past, over the past five years. Don't have high expectations for the opposition somehow getting its act together and creating a, a, a large opposition party that can offer a real challenge uh, to uh, the LDP. Don't think that a lot is going to happen on the policy front that will represent major step forward, whether it be on economic reform, on energy policy, um, uh, on foreign policy. Uh, steady as you go, more of the same. Things could be a lot worse, and I think that's what the public didn't want to see happen. Things could be a lot worse. You could have real, uh, you know, if the opposition had done very well and Abe, Abe was gone, or conceivably if the LDP was gone, you would have a much more chaotic situation, and people's memories still have not gotten over the five or six years of one, one time uh, uh, prime ministers. So more of what we've seen is, for those of you who have to write up stories about Japanese politics, unfortunately, that seems to be the story. Not a very exciting story, uh, unless, like me, you've been following this thing for so many years that you find, you find a way to find excitement in everything that goes on. <laughs> I'll stop right there. Thank you very much. Get part of that, Anthony. Gebhard Hilscher, freelance from Germany, journalist. It's always exciting to listen to you because yes. you do independent thinking with a lot of knowledge of the situation here. Uh, I don't completely share your pessimism about not the, the, the opposition not being able to expand more, but not at the moment, because the next election will be, we don't know when. So they have to build up. Edan Osan got a lot of support for his short uh, period as a head of a new party, but the others are all apart. Uh, one question I would like you to discuss a little bit is, uh, I guess a certain Donald Trump will be visiting this area shortly. Uh, what do you feel about this? What do you think? I mean, uh, Mr. Abe and uh, Mr. Trump, by Abe's uh, desire, call each other by first names, <laughs> which is uh, somewhat ridiculous in Jap a Japanese context, but in the American context, it's more natural. What do you expect? Uh, of Mr. Trump's role for the, not only the crisis with North Korea, but also the security treaty 
long run relationship uh, and uh, Mr. Trump's feeling that he does want to have these surpluses in the trade uh, balances with Japan and with Germany, for instance, uh, reduced, etc. Uh, he doesn't seem a very a logical, a very uh, think, deep thinking leader, but he has his feelings and expresses them openly and it sometimes is hard to listen even to the end of the sentences because some of it is so stupid it seems. But anyway, can you say something sure. about it? Sorry. Sure, I can say I agree with you about what you said about Donald Trump. Um, I think the visit so he's coming to Tokyo, then Seoul, Beijing, uh, Manila, and, uh, and then the Vietnam, um, um, but particularly in Northeast Asia. The visit here, I think, will be mostly ceremonial. It'll be very positive. They're going to, he and Abe will um, uh, talk about how they're exactly on the same page as far as being tough with North Korea, uh, strengthening sanctions, no dialogue until the North Koreans come around to it to agree to discuss denuclearization that'll be the major issue i think that trump will will uh, will emphasize uh, there'll be a lot of um, of language about how the relationship has never been better uh, how he and abe have established this great personal relationship which seems to be actually uh, um, pretty much the, the case uh, he'll meet with the emperor i think uh, so there'll be a lot of ceremony. It'll all be very positive. I think the issue, um, long-term, you know, long-term security relationship and so on. I don't think we're going to. They're going to get into very in, in, into very much of, uh, that. Trump will, will will get into that. I think the tra the question is how much will trade issues arise, emerge in the in the in the conversation. What we've seen so far is Abe's great skill uh, in in managing Trump on all kinds of, of issues, including trade. So, you know, the Asso pence led dialogue, which was initiated by, proposed by the Japanese, and it's a way to keep on talking and not get anything, not have to, you know, deal with free trade agreements or, in, or anything else. I think we'll see, we'll see that kind of, of language. I don't think, I think Trump is going to have a much tougher time in South Korea. And then the most important visit is the one to Beijing. And so he's not going to look, f I, don't, I, believe, I don't believe he's going to make an issue with the Japanese that would be a problem for him. But the caveat, of course, is that we haven't, you know, nobody knows what Trump is going to tweet tomorrow morning. Uh, and so this unpredictability of, of this um, uh, unique uh, president is there, but I don't believe it's going to affect the Japan trip. Japan trip, the Trump trip will be a no-news trip, because um, uh, there won't be any, there won't be any controversy. That's my, my, my sense. Thank you. Antonio. Um, Anthony Rowley, St. Bobby's Times. Um, I wonder what you think the implications are, if any, for uh, Japan-China relations uh, of this election. I mean, um, Xi Jinping is obviously going to emerge from the National Party Congress with greatly enhanced powers. Mr. Trump is, uh, sorry, Mr. Abe is emerging with maybe slightly enhanced powers. But in this situation, is China likely to make tougher demands of Japan in any way? Is Mr. Abe likely to make concessions to China? Just wonder what your general thoughts are. I don't see either the Chinese Xi Jinping making very new big demands on Japan. Uh, and I don't believe that Japan is going to make concessions. I don't know what the concessions would be. Would make, they're not going to be, make any concessions on the security issues, um, Senkaku and so on. But my sense is that Abe, again, being the pragmatist that he is, has been looking for a way to lessen tensions and improve relations uh, with China. And I think recently we've seen similar 
uh, behavior on the part of the Chinese. So right now, the Sino-Japanese relationship seems to be somewhat on the, is it better than it was, than it, than it was um, uh, a year ago. Um, the real issue here is what happens in U.S.-China uh, relations. Of course, as wh where the U.S. goes, I think you'll find the Japanese being very close behind us. Um, uh, and uh, I think J the, the, the worry here is that either um, the relationship the relationship will get will deteriorate. The U.S.-China relationship will deteriorate, especially over trade issues, uh, which could have a negative impact on on Japan, considering all the the uh, high value-added exports that go to China f to be for products that are then exported to to the U.S. and and elsewhere. Uh, or that the U.S. that Xi Jinping and and Trump will get along too well. And that you get this kind of G2 phenomenon in which Japan's interests are not taken fully into, into account. Maybe that is even more of, of a concern. So, um, but in direct answer to, 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 to your question, I don't, again, um, I don't see made, uh, major changes uh, in, this, in, in this difficult relationship, uh, in, at least in the, in, in the, short, in the short term. Richard? Thank you. Richard Lloyd Parry of The Times. Uh, I wanted to ask you about, about Ms. Koike. Uh, you were quite negative and pessimistic about her decisions in this election, but I wonder if there isn't another more optimistic way of looking at it, which is to say that if she'd taken on the, uh, the Democratic Party wholesale and not rejected the, the left rump, then she'd have been taking on a party which had shown itself consistently over years to be incoherent and incompetent, basically. Many efforts have been tried to, uh, you know, to make something of that. They'd never succeeded. Uh, and so she'd have got a, a brief uh, electoral boost, but maybe looking at it in the medium to long term, if she sits it out with at least a presence in Parliament and then has a great Olympics, which everyone will love, then she could have a chance a few years on and maybe a better chance. That was the first question. The second one is about this uh, matter of why a second party system, a two party system has never uh, grounded in Japan, and you suggested it's got a lot to do with, with the voting system. W what alternative voting system might help that? And sure. is there not a, a sense in which it's not just about how people cast their votes in what constituency, but a deeper, maybe even cultural inhospitability to a competitive system, if that's the right word? Thank you. So, on the first, uh, on the first, the first point about maybe what Koike did <coughs> was actually good because it will break off these kind of leftists and uh, uh, maybe lead to a, a uh, more coherent opposition party. I, I, you hear that a lot, and, and I, I appreciate it, but I don't agree. Uh, first of all, think about the Liberal Democratic Party. Liberal Democratic Party, formed in 1955 as a combination of just about every party that was a non-Marxist party in Japan, from the extreme right to pretty left of center, uh, uh, up to as long, the, the kind of the Marxists who ended up in the, either the Socialists or or the, um, uh, or, or the Communist Party. This was not a weakness of the LDP. This diversity, or in a sense, incoherence, ex you know, writers like Kishi, economic kind of moderates like Ikeda, and uh, 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 people like Miki Takio further out on, on the left, they all stayed together because they wanted to have power and keep the socialists out. And so what they did was win elections, and after winning elections, fight out what the policy should be inside the party. That's what factions did. That's what the left needs. 
or the opposition needs. They need a catch-all party in which they win elections, and then they figure out what to do. And if they're not successful, they'll lose. But a leader, a real leader, would first figure out how to win, and then figure out how to win among those who have won. That is where Koike failed. She, couldn't, she didn't figure out how to win. She figured out how to lose. <laughs> and she never really understood that the job of the leader was to win the majority and then figure out how to rule. And the problem with the, deep, with the Democratic Party, the old DPJ and the Democratic Party, was not its diversity. It was its incompetence. They came to power because they did the right thing. They were a catch-all party on the center left. And they won. But for lots of reasons, one having to do with the first person that became his prime minister, Mr. Hatoyama. Not only that he wasn't competent, but that he was so controlled by Ozawa Ichiro. This was what killed the Democratic, uh, uh, the Democratic Party. It was their inability to govern that the people, that the public won't forgive. I don't believe it was because it was ideologically diverse. Um, and it's not really ide that ideologically diverse, but poly you know, diverse in terms of policy and, some, and to some degree, and especially over this national security issue, which is a real problem. So no, I don't think that, um, uh, that what she ended up doing, creating a kind of rump conservative party looking a lot like the LDP is gonna provide an alternative to the LDP. And I don't think the Constitutional Democrats, if it p positions itself so far outside, on the outside in terms of national security policy, that it can become the center of a major policy. So there has to be some movement in the, in the opposition camp to, um, uh, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, on, you know, on, on other issues, other than national security issues, first of all, there aren't a great deal of differences between the, 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 the opposition and the LDP, but where they are, um, uh, they're not ideological, ideological at all. It has a lot to do with, with um, how to deal with aging society and so forth and so on. I don't think that, so, I, so, so enough on that. I just to underscore the point. It was DPJ incompetence at governing, not the diversity of its members that I think cost that party public support. On the voting uh, system, the problem with the single member district system in this country, as I see it, is that on the whole, this is kind of, sounds kind of cliched or stereotype, but Japanese pit don't really like to choose white or black. And in this social structure, uh, where you don't have deep cleavages of class, of race, of ethnicity, um, uh, you have growing inequality, but not to, the ex not to the point where you can divide a room and say, okay, this side of the room they're, more, they're on the right and this side is on the left. When a Japanese politician goes to get elected, he's going after the same voters as the guys from the other, from the, from the other party. Because they're all, you know, everybody's kind of close. So there's a lot to be said for a system that allows voters to choose shades of gray, of gray, that allows for something other than white or black, A or B. In that sense, the old multi-member district system was a very good system for Japan. It enabled minority parties to survive. Uh, it had its pro you know, it had problems in terms of encouraging factionalism and a lot of money spending. That could be dealt with. I think either returning to a, a modified form of the of the Chusen Kyokushido, um, or something like the German PR system. Uh, 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 what you, the goal here should be to have a moderate multi-party system, three or four parties uh, in coalition. That, I think, fits Japan's social norms and kind of cultural, cult cultural context. Not this system that they have, because what you're gonna have with this system is either one party stays in power, or it gets thrown out because of scandals or something else. Public just goes to the other to the other side, but it's not coherent in terms of policy alternatives. So, yeah, my my uh, my rec my prescription would be to 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 figure out what is the form of PR 
of proportional representation that would be most conducive to creating a moderate uh, uh, multi-party party system, which I think is what would be most appropriate in, in Japan. Thank you, Jerry. Frank Packard, associate member. I'd like to talk about China-Japan relations. As you know, both the United States and Japan are not members of the AIIB, the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. Could you conceive, I believe it's Japan following the United States' wish, but most of the rest of the world is in it, including such uh, unusual friends as Iran, Israel, Saudi Arabia, Russia, China. Could you conceive of Japan ever joining the AIIB as an easy way to extend Japan as part of Asia while Prime Minister Abe is in power? I can see it, but I don't think it's likely because I think something else is going on, which is that Japan is, is, is figuring out how to cooperate with the AIB without being uh, a member of it. And one of, I think what's, what's interesting about Abe's uh, foreign policy is how he has managed to get along well with Trump and accept the uh, America first line or strategy or whatever, you know, there's no strategy, but America first position that uh, Trump takes and at, and, and, and at the same time pursue which is, you know, bilateral trade agreements, but at the same time have Japan pursue multilateral trade agreements around the world. The EU agreement, trying to develop a, a broader East Asia a, a trade regime, um, developing both trade, economic, and, and security ties with, with Australia, India, Vietnam, uh, Philippines. Abe has not bought in to the bilateral approach at all, except vis-a-vis -vis the U.S. And there, the, the strategy has been to deflect pressures on Japan to go forward with an FTA uh, 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 and, and so on. So joining AIB, I'm not, I don't see Abe not impossible. I don't see that happening, um, uh, and partly because I don't think they see really maybe the need for it, especially if it if it irritates uh, irritates ir irritates uh, Trump. So as I understand it, and I, and I don't follow, th follow this all that closely, but there is a lot of cooperation between the ADB and AIB, um, and a lot of communication. So probably not in the cards unless U.S. policy changes, and that's not, 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 not going to happen un, under Trump. I would like to ask you a question. Uh, you mentioned that Abe was not happy or didn't look excited when he was putting the red flowers at the winner's uh, wall. And also, you mentioned that uh, if Abe didn't do anything with his over uh, two-thirds majority in the parliament over the last five years, why, do, why, why he should do anything in the next four years? So in this case, why did then Abe call for elections, basically? What does he want exactly? Thank you. He wants to be prime minister for another four years. Uh, and so the question for him was, what would be the timing of the election that would be most conducive to winning a big majority? And he could, he, you know, catch the opposition unprepared, disorganized, do it now, uh, not have to open the diet and face issues, qu questions again about Moritomo and Kake scandals. Um, uh, and so there are a lot of criticism of him for for calling the election, but that's what happens in parliamentary systems, unless they, they've established rules about limiting the, the right to dissolve the diet. But he did what a, I think a clever political leader in power would, would, would do, which is to take advantage of, of the situation. I think what a lot of, what some of us were 
worried about and what people around Abe worried about was that by doing that, he, made, he might end up like Theresa May um, and produce an out, you know, have the outcome be very contrary to the expectation. And that scared the LDP to death when Koike first announced the, the formation of, uh, of, of the whole party. But as I said, she kind of, you know, uh, saved the day for, for Abe and the LDP by being unable to figure out how to have a larger, a large, a, a large, a larger, a larger grouping. Uh, so, Martin. Martin Kölling with the German Financial Daily Handelsblatt. Two questions. One short one, uh, maybe a longer one. I don't know, but. One is about the Communist Party. Uh -huh. uh, they decreased quite considerably. What are the reasons for that and what does it mean for the future of the Communist Party? And the second question is a bit about uh, your read of the situation. How concerned Japan, how concerned uh, the establishment, the state is, uh, foreign diplomatic establishment in the United States is about North Korea, a war with North Korea. Um, some Kevin Rudd said uh, that the risk, in his view, um, has risen from five to almost 25 percent of an outbreak of a conflict. So uh, it seems also that there are some uncertainties in the Japanese government, and I would like to uh, know what you, how, how you read the situation. Uh, thank you. So, the Communist Party, uh, how many, let's see, what, they, they, they lost, they went from, um, from 21, that was about half their seats, from 21 to 12. And by doing so, the Constitutional Democratic Party owes them big time because the communists withdrew 64 candidates from single member districts to support the, the CDP uh, candidate. Uh, uh, and, 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 so, and so their, and their share of the PR went down because they had fewer, fewer candidates, uh, fewer candidates um, uh, uh, running. Uh, I think this is a problem for the, for the Constitutional Democrats in that they have an alliance, an effect, an alliance with the, with the Communist Party, which again comes back mainly to this issue of national security. Um, and there's no way to, 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 to uh, uh, bridge the gap between the conservatives and the communists and, um, uh, on, on, on this issue. So I would imagine there's a lot of sec there must be a lot of thinking in the Communist Party itself now about whether this is such a good thing to um, uh, have this unified uh, uh, front if they end up losing a lot of seats uh, in, in, in the process. Um, uh, the, second, the second question was about, remind me. Oh, North Korea. <clears throat> well, my first of all, my my own my my own view is that um, the danger of of a military conflict between the U.S. and North Korea, which on the face of it makes absolutely no sense. We know that Kim Jong Un does not want to commit suicide, and war would lead to the destruction of the regime and probably his own his 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 own demise. We know, or we, we pray, that Trump understands that war with North Korea, even if the U.S. mainland was not attacked, would result in, a, in, an, in, in an unbelievable tragedy for South Korea and for Japan. So that war makes no sense for either side. But a lot of times, war occurs simply because it makes no, it makes, it makes no sense. I think the danger has increased partly because of the personalities involved. Both Trump and Kim Jong-un uh, uh, are kind of in a chicken game, and neither will back off. There's no way, to, I believe, to, to think that North Korea will give up 
its nuclear weapons or its plan to develop more of a capability. It sees this as its only ticket to, um, it, its only way to, to preserve the regime, the, for, for Kim Jong-un to preserve his own leadership and for the, gov for the country, or for the government to, pr to uh, protect itself against what it perceives as an outside world that's out to destroy it. So I worry that if that Trump will re might resort to a military option, especially if there's a launch of another missile uh, that he decides to take out, uh, either on the launch pad or in the air, Kim Jong-un has to respond. Otherwise, he's um, the emperor without any clothes. He has to respond, and then it'll es it, it, it will escalate. So I think Kenneth Rudd has probably got maybe the right number, 25% or so, possibly up from 5 to 20, 25%. That's where I would, uh, would come out. Now, here in Japan, or in the Japanese government, <clears throat> I think, well, we know Abe talks with Trump a lot on the phone, and a lot about North Korea. But we don't know, is, is, he, is he encouraging Trump to be tough on sanctions? Don't let the Chinese get away with, with making believe that they're supporting sanctions and not really doing it. But is he also at the same time saying, and you cannot, we cannot conceivably use a military option. It's just too costly uh, for everyone involved. I don't know. I think there are. Uh, but I think so. I, my, so, but my sense is that the Japanese. This is just impression. But my impression is that the view here among the leadership is, we have to try to convince Kim Jong Un that we're serious about using a military option if that's the last resort to preventing them from having the, the intercontinental, intercontinental ballistic missile capability to deliver a nuclear weapon to the American homeland. You got to convince them that we're serious. Uh, but, uh, whether, so, but whether the Japanese are telling the uh, Trump people that this it, we can't really do it. I would like to see Abe actually speak out a little bit more. I believe that we need strong sanctions against North Korea. At the same time, there has to be an incentive for North Korea to talk. You can't simply say, if you don't talk, uh, give up nuclear weapons, we're going to destroy you. In one sense, it reminds me of the summer of 1941, when the US embargoed all oil exports to Japan. Uh, at the time, Konoya, Prime Minister Konoya called, asked, wanted to have a summit meeting with President Roosevelt in Hawaii. And Cordell, Cordell Hull and others argued with Roosevelt, if you do that, you're showing your weakness. The only way to deal with Japanese militarists is to be tough. And so we embargoed uh, uh, fuel, airplane fuel, and within a week, the Japanese government made the decision to attack Pearl Harbor. Uh, so sanctions, you got to be, sanctions are important, but they have to be combined with, uh, an, with, an, with an engagement strategy, a dialogue strategy. It's a timing issue. At what point do you start trying to get the North Koreans to talk? Um, but I think what worries me is that I don't think there's much thought going on in Washington about what an engagement strategy would incur, in, entail. Because it has to entail offering something the North Koreans want, not only threatening them with, uh, uh, with what will happen to them if they don't do what we want. So it's a very worrisome situation. It's getting more and more so. And uh, I don't put great stock in the argument, but, but the argument is made here by people in, 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 in near the leadership that one reason for having the election now was that Abe wanted to have the election behind him before the situation with North Korea got much more tense, which is what he expects to happen. Maybe there's something to that, but uh, I don't think that's really all that important. But I think the issue, the, 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 the danger is real, and I don't think the Japanese are playing particularly independent uh, are, are offering some kind of alternative, other way of thinking about this than what uh, Trump is, has has been has been proposing.
By the way, I, because I mentioned, I didn't mention it before, one of the other things in the Trump visit that will get a lot of attention here is his meeting uh, with the fam with uh, Yoko Tamegumi's parents and other uh, family members of of the of the abductees, and that's all part of this beating the drum about how we have to be tough with the North Koreans. Enough on that. Siegfried Knittel, freelancer from Germany. How do you see the future of the CDP? Is the CDP a party coming from nothing uh, to a great success? Is this, cannot this happen in the next election in the opposite direction? The party will, uh, will disappear or dimin very strong diminish because there is not no really no really base, no, no really uh, uh, formulated uh, program uh, strategy. So what, what will, will be the future? What do you see the future of the CDP? I don't see a very bright future for the CGP unless they can figure out how to expand the party to include the the, the, the men I mentioned earlier who were elected as uh, from, from the, as independents from the Democratic Party. Bring, there are some people in the Hope Party that are going to defect or want to defect, from, you know, guys from the Democratic Party. So that means the CGP has to move more towards the center. Uh, very tough to do. So. There's a very real possibility that in the next election, which won't be happening for another three years, three to four years, that this party will disappear. Uh, I think we'll see the Hope Party po possibly disappear very soon uh, or become a minor element in the, in, in the picture. So, the, you know, the, the, the thing about the, the, big, the big question mark about Japanese post-war Japanese political history is why has there never been an opposition party that was able to offer a real challenge to the LDP? Lots of explanations, electoral system explanations and many others, but the situation has a way gotten worse. Because at least in the past, you had opposition party that knew what it stood for and had a lot of support from the public for its positions, even when the public ended up voting for the LDP, but they would come out and support the Socialist Party on opposing state support for Yasukuni Shrine, on revising the Constitution, and so on. Now you have an opposition that is so uncertain about what it opposes and what it proposes that the ability to see them come together is very, it, 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 it is very hard to imagine. What's, the, the, the only way we've seen change of party and power in Japan in the post-war period is probably the way we'll see it in the future if it happens, and that's for the LDP to split. That's what happened in 1993 when Ozawa and Hatoyama and uh, Takemura uh, Masayoshi and others left the LDP. That's what happened later when, you know, the Democrats mostly were, they were former LDP members uh, took power. But there is no sign that the LDP is about to split again anytime soon. These, this can change. Um, so I think we, we just don't, it's gonna be very chaotic over the next few months. Now you have these upper house members and local politicians in the Democratic Party, where its leader, Mr. Mayahara, have said they should all join the whole party. Now even Mayahara says that's not realistic anymore. So where, what are they going to do? Well, there'll be a lot of, um, of, um, of, of shuffling of the deck, but it's hard to, to see what's going to happen. And Mr. Edano is saying that we're not going to play this power game in the Nagata Cho. Well, if you're in politics, if you're in the diet and you want to have power, how do you do that? By playing the power game better than, anybody, than, than other people. So the idea that he's rejecting 
Nagatacho politics to for grassroots politics. It sounds kind of nice, but it's totally meaningless or unrealistic or self-defeating because you can't win if you don't fight. Uh, so, so <laughs> that's about it on that. And this will be last question. My name is Patrick Welte, German newspaper, Frankfurter Allgemeine Zeitung. I have two short questions. One is, if, if I remember correctly, you did not talk about this argument that Koike lost because she was not running for the, uh, for the lower house. How do you judge that argument compared to the argument that she was unfriendly towards the liberal democratic uh, politicians she didn't want to take in? And because, I mean, right, she knew from the beginning that she had a problem either to stay as governor and not staying as, or not staying as governor and get mad of all these, get the madness of all these Tokyo uh, people. Second question, maybe a little bit prov provocative. You, s you argue that Japanese like stability, so they got the LDP right now again. But even earlier, before the single-seat uh, system, they got the LDP and they got stability. So, so why is it necessary to change the, the voting system when the Japanese want stability and that's what they got? Got it. Good. Thank you. Um, so I think, uh, as far as Okoike, her deciding not to run for the lower house was a very big factor in the in the Hope Party losing losing support. As I said before, it sent a signal to everyone that she didn't believe that the party could win. And um, uh, and and her and before she sort of made the final final decision about not running, she had her close confidant, uh, Wakasa, uh, go on NHK TV on Sunday morning, October 1st, and incredibly, while there was all this enthusiasm still there for Hope Party, say, oh, we're not going to win this election. We're aiming to win the next election after this one. And I, I think it's perfectly fine for Koike to remain as governor and not run for the diet. Well, he was just saying what he knew to be her position, but it was the kiss of death. Uh, for for the whole party, um, and as you know, he was defeated uh, uh, yesterday, and didn't even make it up. Didn't even make it high enough to get in on the on the PR on the PR uh, side. So I think not running um, was a very big factor in 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 the defeat. That plus, as I said, excluding. A whole, excluding everybody that didn't meet her definition of what it means to, of of, of what of, of what the whole party candidates should should support, and her lack of a real policy agenda, all that contributed to it. Um, on the second point, yeah, under the multi-member district system, there was stability and that the LDP was always in, always in power, but. Here's the important point about what's changed in Japanese politics. There used to be a system of checks and balance. Every democracy needs, requires a system of checks and balances. Japan had its own system of checks and balances. Faction system was a system of checks and balances within the, L, within the LDP. A, um, a polarized opposition, socialist party, Getting out on the ramparts and fighting the LDP on, on, on issues. Getting lots of civic groups behind it, whether it be about pacifism or yaskuni or other issues. That provided a check. The mass media uh, taking on the LDP and criticizing it on issues. That provided uh, a check. The bureaucracy having a lot of autonomous power provided a check. On the, uh, on, on, the, on the on the on the on the political leadership, right? There was a system of checks and balances that worked, and that has all but been destroyed in recent years. Particularly, the Kante control over the party and over the bureaucracy has never been what it is now. It is, it's stronger than than ever. The fact that. 
uh, chief secretary, uh, chief cabinet secretary, Suga, basically controls the appointment of the top 680 uh, uh, bureaucratic, you know, government of, uh, personnel officials uh, through this cabinet bureau that's been established. That creates this phenomenon of sontaku, bureaucrats trying to read what the what the Kante wants. Uh, so that check is not is not there. Policy is made in the Kante. It's not made any longer in the Policy Affairs Commission of the of the LDP. LDP factions don't exist in 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 in, in the way they, they did before. So everything is concentrated in the Prime Minister's office, and Japan needs a system, a new system of checks and balances, and the only one that can work, given the fact that. Whether Abe is here or gone, Kante control over the bureaucracy will remain. Kante control over the party will remain. This all started with Hashimoto Ryutaro's reforms in the late 1990s. It was forwarded by Koizumi, and it's come to full fruition, fruition under, under Abe, a, com a, a kind of presidential uh, 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 Kante-led uh, Kante -led system. So the the only way to have a, a real check and balance on the, in the system is to have a strong opposition. That's where the check has to come from. And of course, at the end of the day, it's the public. But we see, like in this election, public doesn't is not happy with Abe. Uh, if, if they thought there was a real alternative, they, they, a lot of people would have voted a different way. But the problem with in Japan is not stability or non-stability. It's stability without checks and balances. That is not. A healthy, a healthy democracy cannot have a stable one-party dominant system without any, without much in the way of checks and balances on the power of those who have who have power. Um, and so, what you have now, you need a media that um, uh, that 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 plays that role. You need opposition party that play that plays that role. And uh, we see problems in on on both fronts. Well, thank you very much. This will wrap up our event. We extended 10 minutes. That's great. I would like to give you one year honorary membership to our club. Thank you. So we hope to see you again after our next elections. I hope so. Thanks very much. Thank you for coming today.